Success! Oh, hi. Glad you're here. I'm glad to be with you. Today I'm going to talk about 2004 and the films that were the most impactful on me that were released that year. Mm. Tasty. All right. So, let's see what we got here. <sighs> okay. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I mentioned in the last video that 2003's anything else... Did I say 2003? I meant... I said 2004. 2004. If I, if I, it's 2004, I'm talking about 2004. I might've said 2003. But anyway, in the last video, 2003, I mentioned anything else. And so there were two movies that defined my relationship with my best friend, wife, ex-wife, best friend. Um, and that was anything else. And then the following year, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, I believe is one of the greatest movies ever made. One of the greatest movies I've ever seen. That movie is utterly brilliant. It's extremely unique. I've never seen anything like it before or since. Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Kate Winslet at her best. Jim Carrey at his best. Uh, Kaufman at his best. Like, like that movie is brilliant. And then you throw on top of it that it's literally the story of me and my ex-wife. That's how it would go. If we erased each other's memories, spoiler alert, in the end we'd still end up together. So I had to mention that because that oh what a what a what a what a what a what a I believe that is the runner up. So that would have been the most impactful film of that year for me. But I gave it to one other for other reasons. But that would be the runner up. Uh, next, I'll mention Alien vs. Predator. Not a great movie, but it's a heck of a lot better than the second one, Requiem. Alien vs. Predator's not too bad. I got the pleasure of meeting Lan Lance Henriksen. I liked what it did. It was entertaining enough. But the core memory I have is uh, I used to go to Barnes & Noble. No, Barnes & Noble still exists. What was it called? Borders. Borders Books. All the time at my local mall. Love that store. Two levels of, of books and, and music and, 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 and movies. And, and I loved their magazine section. And I would go in there quite often and go through the magazines. And I would get updates on my movie news. Because this was... 19 years ago, before you could get anything and everything you wanted on the internet. I mean, the internet was there, sure, but you, I was still getting movie news from magazines. So I'll never forget my first images. As a huge Alien fan, who, you know, the last Alien movie was Alien Resurrection, I was just stoked to see another Alien film. So I remember reading a magazine in Borders and seeing my first images from Alien vs. Predator, getting very excited about it. Again, not a, not a bad film. It's not the best, but I think it's pretty good. It's the second one that's garbage. Um, Dawn of the Dead. I'm going to mention Dawn of the Dead. I remember seeing that in theaters with my fiancé at the time? Girlfriend at the time? Whatever it was. We had a blast. Love that movie. I'm not big on the zombie genre, but that's probably my favorite zombie thing ever. I love Zack Snyder's Dawn of the Dead. And I'll never forget being in that theater, having so much fun with this movie, and then you get to the end, before everyone stuck around for the credits, which I always... Well, I, I've, I've stayed to the end of the credits for every single film since 1999's Star Wars Episode One, where my father was like, I'm enjoying the music, let's hang around, and I'm like, okay, and then we get to the very end of the credits and you hear Darth Vader breathing, and I was like, wow. And ever since, I stayed through the whole credits to enjoy the music, to read the names... And sometimes you get a pleasant surprise at the end. And now everyone does it for everything. It's just like, hmm. I was already doing it not just to see if there was an end credit scene. But, sitting through the credits of Dawn of the Dead, you get the actual ending. So plenty of people who had already left had no idea how the movie actually ends. Which, spoiler alert, the movie ends with them going off to the island, yay, happily ever after. But then during the credits, you see them arrive at the island and it's littered with zombies and they all die. And I thought that was such a great, great, great ending. I love a more realistic, uh, downbeat, bummer ending. Because that's life. Life ends bad. Spoiler alert. Your life's gonna end with your death. So, I gotta give a shout out to Dawn of the Dead. 
Uh, we'll save that one for a second. I'm gonna mention Hildalgo, a movie I've never seen. But I saw that trailer so many freaking times. Hidalgo is etched in my mind. I'll never see it, but I'll always remember it. Viggo Mortensen on a horse race in the desert. Or something. Man, I saw that trailer so many times. Sky Captain and the World of Tomorrow. Is something I wish we could get more movies like that. A noir film taking very much as if it was a movie made in like the 20s, 30s, 40s, but so sci-fi, futuristic, from that point of view. So much fun. I love Sky Captain and the World of Tomorrow. I could watch it a thousand times. Ah, uh, oh, I need to, yeah, I need to watch that. I love Sky Captain and the World of Tomorrow. It is just, it's just, it, it's, it's perfect. It's the epitome of, of, of noir, black and white, sci-fi, entertainment. I just, I love that movie. I love it. I love everything about it. Sky Captain and the World of Tomorrow is an extremely underrated film. And a lot of people watch it today. Oh, these visual things. And I'm like, shut up. Great movie. I, Robot. I, not a robot. I, human. Yeah, I can hit the button. But I'm not a robot. No. But I, Robot, starring, um, that guy who likes to slap people on live television. Love that movie. It's so impactful. I'll never forget seeing it in theaters. Who's who 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 who's gonna forget? I did not murder him. You know, great great film. But I was mostly disappointed that we didn't get the the full trilogy based on those books of what would have really happened with the robot uprising and this and that. I wanted more, but we didn't get more. We just got the one. But it's still a great film worth mentioning. The Machinist. If you've not heard of The Machinist or you have and haven't seen The Machinist, you much. You, you must watch The Machinist. Christian Bale. That's got to be, by far, hands down, bar none, his greatest performance of his life, and always will be. I believe he did it, like, right after the first Batman that he did. So he went from huge and bulky to, like, just look up the picture of him in The Machinist. Especially with, like, his shirt off. He's skin and bones. Literally skin and bones. Something they would do with CG today. But 19 years ago, Christian Bale went, no. I'll deprive myself of sustenance and protein until I'm withered away, almost completely dead. It is so haunting how skin and bones he is in that movie. For good reason. If you, if, It's about a guy riddled with I wouldn't want to spoil it. You need to see The Machinist. It's insane. Christian Bale, oh my gosh. The fact that he pulled that off and then bulked back up for the next Batman. That's insane. Just, just, a, I, I, yeah. Watch The Machinist. Um, Secret Window, I'm only going to mention Secret Window. Not a huge fan of that movie, but it was very big deal back then. And I remember seeing it in theaters. And the whole thing in the trailers and the promotion and throughout the movie, it's like, it's all about the ending. The ending is the most important part of the story. And then, of course, it's just foreshadowing that this movie has a twist ending, which in retrospect isn't really much of a twist when you set it up like that. But I remember just being like, oh, oh, wow, oh, yeah. And then ever since then, that line has stuck with me, though, whenever I watch a movie. It's all about the ending, because the ending is the most important part. I can't tell you how many times I've watched a movie where I'm like, this movie's pretty much garbage, and then I get to the ending, and I'm like, wow, that's brilliant. But more often, I can't tell you how many times I watch a movie that's like, oh, this is brilliant, this is the best thing ever, all they have to do is stick the landing, and then the ending is terrible. And it completely deflates the entirety of the film. That's another important thing about like the MCU's end credit scenes and stuff like that. You're, when you leave a movie, you're going to remember how you felt when it was over. It's the ending that's going to leave the impression on you. We all remember when we left the... the well, not all of us, but a lot of us remember when we left the theater of Infinity War. What's the one thing we were thinking about? That ending. Anyway. Hey, Infinity War. I didn't plan that. It's just mentioning it. So, yeah. Um, Lemony Snicket's A Series of Unfortunate Events, starring Jim Carrey. Love it. Great. Love that movie. Absolutely fantastic. I wish we would have gotten the entire series with that cast. Especially, uh, What's-Her-Face as the daughter. 
who was then um, Baby in Sucker Punch. Woo! And uh, yeah, I wish we would have gotten that whole series, but the fact that we at least got one and Jim Carrey's absolutely fantastic in it, love that movie. And I quote it all the time. I'm going to be the ultimate dad. Great movie. So I have to mention it. I'm just going to mention Hellboy because I remember seeing Hellboy in theaters, the original Hellboy with Ron Perlman. Loved it. I'd never seen anything like it. Loved it. Oh, especially with uh, with uh, Firestarter lady. Uh, what's her name? Uh, I love her so much that I can't remember her name, but you know who I'm talking about. I love her. She's amazing. She's, um, I love her. And I love Hellboy. And it was, it was a very unique experience. I'd never seen anything like, what the heck is this? HP 3. Oh, Harry Potter 3. I have to mention Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban because that was the first Harry Potter film that I saw in theaters. And then I remember that was the one where I was like, I mean, first of all, it's great. Not my favorite. Most people's favorite. Not my favorite, but it's like my second favorite. Second of all, it's still to this day one of my favorite depictions of time travel ever. Like, I love the way it's brilliantly crafted in a realistic, realistic, well, you know what I mean. It's just, oh, with, with the, with the, let's go through the movie, movie's over. No, it's not. We're going to go back and go through this part of the movie again and fill in all these little, 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 oh, I just, oh, absolutely brilliant. But then, so, because I remember the first two Harry Potters, I was like, meh, these are kids' movies, but whatevs. And then I checked out the third one, which I believe what got me in the theater was the trailer. That's what got me in the theater was the trailer, because they did the Bubble Bubble Boil and Trouble song, and then it was very, I was like, okay, you know, something like get this way comes, and I was like, all right, I'll check this one out. And I loved it, and I was like, you know what, I might, I might, you know, I look forward to the next one. It, it was the first time when I was like, okay, okay. And then, of course, it was the fourth one where I really was like, but... It was the third one that turned me from, eh, Harry Potter's whatever for kids, to, okay, these, these are pretty good. So, gotta mention the third one. Um, Thunderbirds. I'm only mentioning Thunderbirds because how dare they make a live action Thunderbirds when they should have done with the puppets. Thank God we got Team America World Police. When I was a kid, granted, they were obviously reruns and syndication, but for some reason they would show the original, what was it, like the 60s or something? 60s or 70s? With the puppets, the Thunderbirds TV show, and I would watch it on Saturday mornings with my with, with with my neighbor eating our cereal. Oh, it's time for Thunderbirds! I loved it because they were little puppets. That's what I loved about it. That's one of the reasons why Team America World Police is great. Team America World Police is littered with brilliant humor, but if you made that live action, wouldn't be near as good. So how dare they make a Thunderbirds movie not with puppets? So I never saw it. Give me puppets. Um, taking lives. Ooh, I'll try not to get too personal or too uh, inappropriately vulgar, but Taking Lives is a great movie. It was my introduction to Paul Dano, which I didn't know at the time, but in retrospect, Paul Dano's amazing, obviously. Um, Angelina Jolie, which I was never a huge fan of, but <laughs> this movie made me a fan of Angelina Jolie. I think I saw it before Gia, obviously. But anyway, great movie. Kiefer Sutherland, Ethan Hawke, Twists and Turns, great ending. Oh, I love it. Great, fantastic movie, Taking Lives. But I have to mention it, and I'm going to be completely honest with you. So feel free to turn off the video now. There's a, um, there's a sex scene in Taking Lives with Ethan Hawke and Angelina Jolie, which was my introduction to Angelina Jolie's full glory, I guess. And I was like, oh, that was pretty, because it's not just a, it's a, it's a pretty hot sex scene. So when it came out on DVD and they released an unrated version because that scene was slightly extended, I like that scene. I ain't gonna lie. Angelina Jolie was, uh, is, is, uh, is, 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 is pretty. I was like, oh. 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 Sorry. I'm being, on I'm just being honest. So, I have the, the unrated DVD that, you know, 
Thank God it's not a VHS, or it would always be at the same spot. Anyway, um... Is that everything? So yeah, I mentioned that Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind was the runner-up. Oh, there's two more. Okay. I, I, I kind of saved this one for second to last on purpose. Because if you're watching this, especially if you're a subscriber of mine, which if you are, thank you. And if you're watching this part of the video and you're familiar with my videos, including this one, you'll know that I... Everybody's got to have their tag for what they say at the beginning of every video and what they say at the end of every video. So when I was mulling things over, you'll notice that I say three things at the beginning of every video, and three of them are references to three things. One of them is a reference to a police officer telling kids to be... One of them is a reference to Strong Against Crime, spoiler alert, which I discovered from Red Letter Media's Best of the Worst, and I looked it up online, and my son and I had a blast watching Strong Against Crime. Look, look, look up Strong Against Crime on YouTube. Press play. You're welcome. Another one is obviously a reference to another film. My, one of my favorite films of all time. In fact, is that on one of the, when did that come out? I probably didn't add it to the list because I didn't see it until much, much later. So we'll discuss that when we discuss the other one. But yes, it's obvious what that's from, if you're familiar with that movie. But... I start every video with... SUCCESS! And the reason is... One day... I saw this movie in theaters back in 2004, and it was a good time, and it's an okay movie, whatever. But one day, a few years ago... My best friend, ex-wife, best friend. We're hanging out, and she's like, you gotta see this clip. You gotta see this clip. And it was the beginning of this movie. And she's like, wait for it. It's literally the first line in this movie. And the bad guy is doing his scheming. And his little sidekick comes up behind him. Or he's looking out. The, no, I think the sidekick's looking out the window. And then the sidekick turns around, and his boss is right there in his face. And goes, SUCCESS! And it's just the most hilarious, oddly placed, over-the-top thing ever. Especially at the beginning of a movie. Especially for it to be the first line. Van Helsing. Hugh Jackman's Van Helsing. Starts with the bad guy going, SUCCESS! Very abruptly in someone's face. Hilarious. Look it up. So that's what that's from. So now you know. Only if you watch this. Spoiler alert on the Strong Against Crime, though. Don't tell anybody about that. And the other one, the uh, Oh Hi. If you don't know what Oh Hi Mark is from, you've got bigger problems. Anyway. Last but not least, the number one most impactful film that I saw that was released in 2004 is yes, of course, obviously, the Spongebob Squarepants movie. Went with my girlfriend, fiance, whatever it was at the time, to the theaters, and we laughed our asses off for an hour and a half. That movie, hilarious. Jeffrey Tambor, Scarlett Johansson, everyone from Spongebob. Oh, oh, uh, uh, Baywatch, David Hasselhoff. Oh, the live action segment. That's how you take a TV show, especially a cartoon, and put it on the big screen. Don't just put a long episode on the big screen. Star Wars, Clone Wars. Do something you've never done before. Do something you can only do on the big screen. And boy, did they. The SpongeBob SquarePants movie is a brilliant, perfect film. And I quote it all the time. Waiter! I'm a goofy goober. Yeah. I'm ready. Promotion. I'm ready. Promotion. That's literally what I was chanting every time I got a promotion at my current job. I'm ready. Promotion. Or when, or when, or, or when he says Squidward's name, but SpongeBob's not even paying attention and he's like, whoa, yeah, and he's screaming in people's faces and then he's on the microphone. I'm making a complete lie to myself. Self, self. That movie, and then it gave me so many memories with my, with my girlfriend, fiance, wife. 
so many memories with others, like that movie, so many memories with my son, which led to other movies that I took my son to, you know, years later, obviously, and, and it just, it just, it's, it's, it's just there in the zeitgeist of my mind, is the SpongeBob SquarePants movie. But yeah, and there's one episode, I ended up getting a DVD that had a few collection of episodes, I gotta figure out which one it is, and my favorite moment in SpongeBob TV history is when he comes out and he's doing the 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 Krabby Patty song. Uh, I like Krabby Patties. They are... <laughs> Gotta love SpongeBob. Okie dokie. Oh, tell me what that's from. that's from. That's a reference too. I sign off with Okie Dokie because there is a movie, maybe we'll get to it, but there is a movie where they cut to a crime scene and there's a, not like a crime scene, but, because it's a kid's movie, but like where some stuff just went down and they cut to the, the aftermath and there's a police officer there and like they literally just cut to the scene and this is how the scene starts. It starts with him radioing pretty much over and out but he says okie dokie and i just thought that was the funniest thing in the whole world that a police officer just ended his official conversation with okie dokie tell me tell me what movie that is we'll get there unless it gets overlooked when i'm looking all these movies up because boy do a lot of movies come out every year and apparently i saw a lot of them I wish I could update my Letterboxd with every movie I saw, but boy, would that be time-consuming. Follow me on Letterboxd at... What am I? I don't know, Paul Charman or something? And then you get the little Sea Lab Captain picture? Anyway. Okie dokie.